check okay all right we are back with another series of lectures and this time i decided to tackle something that is very important very common and uh, something that i've never touched in the past and that is glaucoma so this lecture is going to be basically an introduction to the vast subspeciality of glaucoma we're going to classify we're going to see if it is possible to identify the different types and uh, accordingly manage those diseases so let us let us begin so classically speaking glaucoma has always been referred to either as an open angle which basically means that suppose this is the cornea all right suppose you have a cornea here pardon my handwriting here's the sclera all right and behind the sclera and the cornea you have the iris somewhere over here so the angle that forms between the cornea and the iris the post the anterior surface of the iris is known as the angle of the anterior chamber all right some part of the ciliary body is also involved but for all practical purposes we can consider it to be the angle between the posterior part of the cornea and the anterior part of the iris okay it appears as the sclera is involved here uh, please make a correction it's the cornea it's the angle between the cornea and the iris all right so when i say open angle it basically means that there is no physical impediment to the passage of aqueous humor from the posterior chamber into the anterior chamber which is the normal pathway of the aqueous humor there is no restriction pupillary block is not there uh, there's nothing that is closing the angle so that is basically an open angle glaucoma all right so okay got it so the very first type of open angle glaucoma that you need to know which is the commonest is primary open angle glaucoma so when i say with the word primary it basically means that there is no specific cause it just happens so it happens in certain predisposed individuals it doesn't happen in other non predisposed individuals so when i say primary open angle glaucoma there are certain risk factors it is uh, it's it's age it's sex it's racial predilection it is uh, having a particular refractive error so on and so forth so primary doesn't have actually have a reason it doesn't have a cause so after primary if there is a primary there has to be a secondary open angle glaucoma and when i say secondary it means that there is a reason why the aqueous is unable to follow its normal pathway and uh, the commonest one of the commonest causes of secondary open angle glaucoma is pseudo exfoliation syndrome so pseudo exfoliation is nothing but the deposition of a fibrillary material this deposition is not only in the eyes of course in the eyes you will get deposition because that causes the secondary open angle glaucoma it physically blocks that fibrillary that proteinaceous material blocks the angle of the anterior chamber there is deposition in the eye there is in the liver there is in the kidney there is in the heart okay and uh, so on and so forth so multiple places where you can have a deposition of this fibrillary material so there is something called pseudo exfoliation syndrome the second is pigment dispersion syndrome all right pigment dispersion syndrome so what basically happens is going back to the image that we have here the posterior part of the iris is getting rubbed against something here known as the lens okay there's the lens here behind the iris so this lens and iris are getting uh, are rubbing against each other and since the posterior epithelium of the iris is pigmented this these pigments start getting released and by the natural course of the aqueous currents these will come and get deposited in the angle of the anterior chamber so that pigment dispersion produces a a secondary open angle glaucoma all right the third type of open angle secondary open angle glaucoma is lens induced glaucoma so this can either be leaking lens proteins this leakage could be through an intact capsule or this could be either due to an inflammation that the lens material causes because the lens is remember that the lens uh, material is sequestered inside the capsule it is not normally exposed to the uh, surrounding tissues so because of that if any lens protein leaks out it is going to produce an inflammation so that inflammation is going to produce a block because these inflammatory cells are going to go and block the angle of the anterior chamber so multiple mechanisms how a lens induced secondary open angle glaucoma can occur the next type is a intraocular tumor such as either a retinoblastoma or a malignant melanoma or a uveal melanoma all right so what is the mechanism this could either be due to the direct tumor cells blocking the angle of the anterior chamber or it could again be due to an inflammation 
or it could be an attempt by the body to re to remove these tumor cells by the method of phagocytosis. So again, multiple mechanisms, how tumors can cause a secondary open angle glaucoma. Remember, tumors can cause an open angle as well as an angle closure glaucoma. So one of the causes of both an open as well as a closed angle glaucoma, you may see the same uh, cause causing two different kinds of glaucoma in the same patient. All right. So after tumors, you will get intraocular inflammation. And the most common ocular in intraocular inflammatory condition that we know is uveitis, more specifically the anterior variety of the uveitis. Other inflammatory causes such as post-traumatic, post-surgical, so on and so forth. So in general, inflammation, inflammatory cells blocking the angle of the anterior chamber and producing a glaucoma. All right. After inflammation, you have a very interesting cause called increased uh, episcleral venous pressure. So episcleral veins are the veins that drain the aqueous humor from the angle of the anterior chamber. So when these veins have a raised pressure, this back pressure is going to push the aqueous back into the anterior chamber and the drainage is not going to occur properly. One of the most common causes of raised uh, intra uh, raised episcleral venous pressure are AV malformations. The other causes such as a SVC syndrome and very common uh, in, in the middle-aged female group of patients, thyroid eye disease. So in thyroid eye disease, there's a congestion of all the intraocular structures. This congestion is going to compress the epistural veins, increase pressure, and once again, there's going to be glaucoma. All right. The seventh cause of open angle glaucoma is either trauma, which can either be spontaneous or surgical. Now, when I say trauma, it basically means hyphema. So there's blood in the anterior chamber. Normally blood is not to be present in the anterior chamber. When it is present, it does not get cleared very easily by the angle of the anterior chamber. So that blows blood cells block the exit, or it could be a, something called ghost cell glaucoma. So this is basically degenerated RBCs. So those RBCs that stay inside, the hyphema that stays, get slowly degenerated over time because that is a natural course of those RBCs to occur. These ghost cells go and block the angle of the anterior chamber. Then there is something called schwartz matsuo syndrome it's a little bit of a specific name schwartz matsuo syndrome so what basically happens in schwartz matsuo syndrome is there is a retinal detachment most commonly it is a regmatogenous okay so there is a break in the retina so because there is a break in the retina the photoreceptors get released into the vitreous these photoreceptors diffuse somehow through the jelly into the anterior chamber and these photoreceptors come and block the angle of the anterior chamber. So this is basically a blockage due to photoreceptors, the rods and cones, the degenerated rods and cones. And finally, we have certain drugs that can cause open angle glaucoma. The commonest drug, the most, uh, the most uh, difficult drug to manage if not used very properly are corticosteroids. And now you might be wondering what root of corticosteroids is going to predispose you to an open angle glaucoma. It is going to be all routes possible. It can be either oral, it can be uh, parenteral, it can be topical, or it can even be inhalational. As simple as that. All right. So amongst these, the most significant to produce glaucoma is topical and oral predominantly produces cataract. Okay, there is no hard and fast rule as such, but this has been observed to be uh, the, the, the process. All right. So now let's talk about closed angle or angle closure glaucoma. All right. So let us first deal with, again, the most common variety, primary angle closure glaucoma. No specific cause, no specific reason. There are just predisposing factors. Uh, in the due course of lectures, we'll take about uh, we'll, we'll take up each type of glaucoma and discuss them in detail, including the investigations and management. This lecture is just to give you an overview of what should come to your mind. What are the numbers and names that should be coming to your mind when you are evaluating a possible patient or a diagnosed patient of glaucoma? All right. So to discuss PSAG, there are three terminologies that you need to understand. The very first is primary angle closure suspect in which there is an iridotrabecular contact more than equal to 180 degrees. So when I talk about iridotrabecular contact, it basically means contact between the anterior surface of the iris and the posterior surface of the trabecular meshwa. So contact between those, if you consider the eye to be 360 degrees, this is more than or equal to 180 degrees. But there is no 
पेरिफेरल एंटीरियर साइनेकिया और रेस्ड आईओपी ऑल राइट सो दिस इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर टू डिफ्रेंशिएट बिटवीन प्राइमरी एंगल क्लोजर सस्पेक्ट एंड प्राइमरी एंगल क्लोजर इन प्राइमरी एंगल क्लोजर द आई टी सी कॉन्सेप्ट रिमेन्स द सेम बट देर इज पास और रेस्ड आईओपी वन ऑफ दोज टू बट देर इज नो ग्लोकोमैटस ऑप्टिक एक्ट्रोफी because remember the definition of glaucoma is not raised intraocular pressure it is the the irreversible damage of the optic nerve head with or without a raised intraocular pressure all right and third is primary angle closure glaucoma now this is easy to understand there is pass there is iop there is itc whatever it is plus in addition there will be glaucomatous optic atrophy so these are the three terminologies that you need to understand while discussing primary angle closure glaucoma again hypermetropia is a common refractive error that is seen in angle closure glaucoma patients the next variety is a secondary angle closure glaucoma all right again secondary there is a particular cause to whatever is causing the glaucoma and the most common cause of secondary angle closure is again lens induced so remember lens induced is another cause of open as well as closed but here this is phacomorphic variety of lens induced glaucoma so basically the lens is swollen the morphology of the lens has increased the size has increased which is compressing the angle of the anterior chamber the next uh, ca category of glaucoma under lens induced is ectopia lentis what it basically means is the lens is displaced it's either superior subluxated inferior subluxated or it is anteriorly uh, any of those varieties marfan homocystinuria will march sani syndrome lots of syndromes associated we'll discuss it in detail in the secondary angle clo angle closure lecture and the third is either an aphakic or pseudophakic angle closure glaucoma so one might consider that if there's aphakia if there is no lens then there should why should there be an angle closure it, the associated inflammation the associated floppiness of the iris so the iris stays in position because of either the crystalline normal crystalline lens natural crystalline lens or because of the intraocular lens that you put suppose the patient has an aphakia this iris is going to be floppy and very often it goes and sticks to the angle of the anterior chamber and it shuts down the angle pseudophakia again very often it's an inflammation either you place the intraocular lens in the sulcus which is usually not preferred you want to keep it in the capsular bag but if you place it in the sulcus or if there is excessive inflammation or if it's left behind lens tissue uh, the cortex aspiration has not been very adequate so you're going to get an inflammation and you're going to have a lens induced glaucoma the next variety of secondary angle closure is neovascular glaucoma neovascular there's new blood vessels that form new blood vessels new fibrous tissue this fibrous tissue could be either uh, on a de novo which means it is just forming along with the blood vessels or it could be because the blood vessels are regressing and the four most common causes of neovascular glaucoma are diabetic retinopathy then there is a uh, 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 ocular or oh, let me let me let me recall ocular ischemic syndrome yes there's diabetic retinopathy ocular ischemic syndrome there's branch retinal vein occlusion and central retinal vein occlusion in no specific order however diabetic retinopathy is the commonest cause of neovascular glaucoma these three are a little variable depending on the geography but diabetic retinopathy the most common cause of neovascular glaucoma all right so these new blood vessels will contract these fibrous tissue will contract and close down the angle of the anterior chamber the next is a very interesting uh, syndrome which requires a lecture of its own it is called irido corneal endothelial syndrome it's extremely rare it's an idiopathic condition most often uh, so a little bit of detailed discussion is warranted for this condition which will take in the due course of time okay for now just remember ice syndrome irido corneal endothelial syndrome then again intraocular tumors as is mentioned it can cause an open as well as closed angle glaucoma the tumor itself can compress the iris if it's an irial iridial melanoma it's a uveal melanoma it will compress the angle of the anterior chamber then you're going to have inflammation which can accompany the neovascular variety of glaucoma that we saw uh, after inflammatory glaucoma we have malignant glaucoma okay a very specific type of secondary angle closure glaucoma okay so basically the aqueous has to go from posterior to anterior 
all right it has to go from the posterior chamber to the anterior chamber in malignant glaucoma what basically happens is it goes from the posterior chamber into the vitreous so it is also known as aqueous misdirection syndrome all right so why does this happen this happens very often due to trauma due to an anterior uh, i'm sorry a posterior rotation of the ciliary body so on and so forth so malignant glaucoma secondary open angle glaucoma secondary angle closure glaucoma very sorry all right the next is retinal detachments but these have to be non regmatogenous okay so remember regmatogenous very often cause an open angle non regmatogenous which are basically um, the uh, what are the other types of retinal detachment there is exudative and tractional all right so these two are likely to cause an angle closure glaucoma and along with retinal detachment because uh, the mechanism is similar another condition called uveal effusion syndrome so the uvea is effused with fluid it is filled with fluid it's edematous swollen so this swollen uvea is going to compress the angle of the anterior chamber all right another very common i'm sorry a, a rare condition however very common if the a uh, cataract surgery is complicated in terms of an open um, tunnel open sclerocorneal tunnel there's going to be either an epithelial ingrowth or a fibrous ingrowth both these are likely to continue growing over the angle of the anterior chamber and hence produce a angle closure contraction of these membranes these fibers are going to produce an angle closure glaucoma okay the next cause of secondary angle closure is either trauma which can be spontaneous or surgical trauma which is going to disturb the anatomy of the iris very often aphakia complicated pseudophakia iris claw lens uh, so on and so forth so complicated varieties of cataract surgery are going to produce angle closure glaucoma okay some some lesser common causes are nanophthalmos which is a congenital variety of a very small eyeball so the, when the eyeball is very small naturally all the structures are small the angle of the anterior chamber is also very small very likely to close down and cause an angle closure glaucoma the other variety is a flat anterior chamber which is very often seen when the when, uh, when the tunnel remains open when the sclerocorneal tunnel remains open there is a leak of the aqueous humor and when the aqueous humor leaks the anterior chamber collapses and there is a contact between the periphery of the cornea the trabecular meshwork and the anterior part of the iris so that causes an angle closure glaucoma and finally the last cause of secondary angle closure glaucoma are certain drugs the most common drugs that cause an angle closure glaucoma are topiramate which is an antopi ramate i sincere apologies to p ramate which is i believe an anti epileptic drug carbonic anhydrase inhibitors such as acetazolamide or dozolamide brinzolamide and the last category of drugs is trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole combination all right so these are the varieties of glaucoma that you can see so whenever you see a patient of glaucoma these are the certain types 12 plus i guess 9 21 types of glaucoma that should come to your mind in addition to the primary open angle and closed angle so there's 23 types of glaucoma that you should think of at one time is daunting but with practice you you can adapt to the requirements all right so this takes care of the lecture today we're going to take more lectures on glaucoma take each topic in detail special thank you to all the subscribers we have crossed 3000 subscribers i had not checked uh, my youtube studio for a very long time and i recently opened it up and 3000 subscribers it's 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 extremely uh, heartening to know that it motivates me to make more videos so thank you however i do notice that most of my viewers are non subscribers which is about 88% are non subscribers so if you like my videos if you want me to make more videos and if it helps you or people that you know please subscribe to the channel like the video share the video subscribe to the channel and we'll see you again soon thank you so much